as regards attitude to life, it is much the best to think that the experiences we have are necessary for us. Otherwise we will be continually making accounts and complaining that things are not fair. Taking up this point of view about our experiences gives more meaning to ourselves. This is the only way to get something from every experience. It is the only answer as to why we may have so many unpleasant experiences. Now in order to keep up this point of view towards our experiences we must remember and be awake. We must be awake to the conscious view that the experience belongs to us because our being needs it in order to develop. We then see that the material for our development lies in our experiences. But without this consciously taken view we cannot see this because we are asleep. We think that these experiences should not come to us and that they have no possible meaning for us. But they are exactly the material that we have to work on. It is by means of these experiences that we develop at the expense of our imagination. The imaginary person has to go. But people do not understand this. Everywhere you see people not understanding what they have to do in this respect. Everywhere you see two imaginary people living together, each in their own world and making nothing of their experiences. Of course, this view alters the standpoint towards life very much, and makes one's daydreams of secondary importance. The business of living is not according to either one's desires or one's daydreams, or what one expects to get from life. To take life experiences as material for work on oneself is a reversal of the usual way of taking them. Once you pity yourself, or identify in some other way, this reversal is again reversed and one is back in the ordinary way of taking life. You are no longer doing the work. Now in all this it is your weak spot that is, where you are most vulnerable that prevents you from using these experiences instead of letting them use you. Of course, if you never observe yourself, you will never be able to see your weak spot. There may be more than one. These weak spots have to be strengthened and can only be strengthened by means of the work. You have to face some experiences. I mean, that you cannot avoid all experiences that are unpleasant, because if you have the money and opportunity to do so there will be no development. You will probably grow more and more narrow and selfish, which always seems to happen when there is no development. Now the taste of working is quite definite. When you are taking the experiences of life more consciously, it is a right arrangement of things in you that gives you a certain inner taste. Life is not driving you. But when you identify, and therefore fall asleep, this inner taste vanishes and in place of it you have, what I have called before the taste of life, which by comparison is very tasteless. The taste of life is always the same, whatever your particular forms of excitement are. I should say that after a time you should be able to see this for yourself. Now, whenever you work you bring about a reversal of some kind. You have the taste of working. If you do not bring about any reversal, it is not work. It tastes different. For example, to imagine one is working, when one is not really, does not bring about any reversal. People often imagine that they are observing when they are not. This is not working, and has none of the clean astringent taste of working. Imagination reverses nothing. What you do in imagination leads to no kind of development. Now there is a general diagram connected with the four bodies of man in which it is shown that man as he is is driven from one end by life. As long as a man remains asleep and is mechanical, he is driven by one end of this machine. He is, therefore, properly called a machine. But if a man begins to develop himself interiorly by working he begins to be driven from the other end from the side of his will. If I will from the work to work on an experience that I find myself in, it will not drive me. I will not be able to change the experience, but I will be able to change the way I take it. Knowing this, my attitude towards the experience will be right. Of course, if every unpleasant experience makes you negative, your machine will be driven by life and you will remain exactly what you are supposed not to remain in this world since we were created not to be driven by life. We were created not to be machines, but at the same time we can be machines and serve nature, and most people remain machines all their lives. A developing man begins to be worked, in part, from the will side, instead of from the life side of his machinery. He begins to make his machinery work at times in a certain way which is the reverse of the way in which life makes it work.